Okay guys, hope you had a lovely weekend. What we're going to start looking at today is we're going to start looking at features of the upper course. So we're looking at river landforms of the upper course or of the youthful stage. So you already know from what I've spoken about that as the river flows from its source in the youthful stage, it is fast flowing because of steep slopes, steep gradient, and that causes erosion. Now that erosion is downwards or vertical in the river channel, and that causes the river channel to become deeper, and it creates different features, such as our V-shaped valleys, our interlocking spurs, and waterfalls. Now we're going to have a brief look at the v-shaped valley and the interlocking spurs and we're going to use the waterfall for our detailed feature. So first of all <coughs> our v-shaped valley. An example of a v-shaped valley is found in the upper course of the River Lee and it will be found in the upper course of most rivers. What does our V-shaped valley look like? Well, the first thing is our V-shaped valley is shaped like a V. Very important. So that's where it gets its name from, the shape. And it is quite narrow at the base with steep sides. We have another V-shaped valley here in another part of the world. Again, we have that lovely V-shape with a narrow base. So you might be wondering, how does it get this shape? Well, what happens is that the river is eroding vertically, and very dramatically in this case. And hydraulic action, the force of moving water, is one of the main types of erosion that you see here. It creates a deep, narrow valley, and then over time, mechanical weathering attacks the sides of the valley. So here and here breaking it down, eventually mass movement will cause this regolith to slide into the river where it will be taken away and you are left with this steep v-shape for the valley with a very, very narrow base with your river in it and that is how your v-shaped valley is formed. How does that look like or what does it look like in a map? You have your river, your thin blue line, and you have your contours, and your contours actually form a little almost V shape to either side of your river. So that little V shape from the contours, that is your V shape valley. Okay? So that is what you are looking for in the map. this V-shape of contours in the map. Now that's our first one done, our V-shape valley. The next one that we want to have a look at is our interlocking spurs and again they're found in the upper course of rivers such as the River Slaney but you'll find them in the upper course of many rivers. So what you're looking for are these spurs of land that are sticking out and you'll have the river flowing down here around them because the river will always take the easiest path. So we have the spurs actually marked out in this diagram. One, two, three spurs of land sticking out. And you can see our again river flowing along here at the base 
and we have these spurs that the river is going around. Now sometimes the spurs are a harder rock that the river is finding a little bit more difficult to erode, so it's just eroding the easier stuff. Sometimes it's just higher ground. As the river erodes vertically, it may struggle to erode the harder rock, so it will just move around them and leave these spurs behind, so the river zigzags in between them. We have a lovely, lovely example in this diagram. All of these splur spurs, it's a little bit like if you lace your fingers together and turn them over, you can see the zigzags, that's your interlocking spurs. And this is what your diagram of an interlocking spur looks like. And then if you were looking for it on a map, so down here is the old age stage or the lower course. We're coming up here to the upper course of our river. And what you're looking at is this little zigzags around or between the contour lines. So that will be your interlocking spurs. Now this is our big question. So we're going to be using the waterfall for our FEED, Feature, Example, Explanation and Diagram. And I'm going to show you how to do the diagram in another video um, in a while. So these are our waterfalls. They're quite dramatic. This is a very impressive double waterfall that you can see here. And all of you will have seen a waterfall somewhere. So for our F, our feature, a waterfall is a feature formed by erosion in the youthful stage or upper course of the river. All of this is very important. So here is a picture of our waterfall and this is going to be the, our example waterfall as well, Torque Falls in Killarney. An example of a waterfall is found at Torque Falls in Killarney. You can see it here, lovely example of a waterfall retreating. And now our explanation. A waterfall is a vertical drop in the course of a river in its youthful stage. When the river flows over an area where a band of hard rock such as granite lies across a band of soft rock such as sandstone, the soft rock is eroded more quickly than the resistant hard rock gradually creating a vertical drop. So all of this will make sense to you. That soft rock is more easily eroded and you get a drop. So we would have had soft rock covering this. It's been eroded. We've just got the hard rock left behind, which is eroded as well, but much more slowly than soft rock. The river erodes vertically because it's in the youthful stage, due to the steep gradient and fast movement of the water in the upper course. Hydraulic action, so we're talking about one of our processes here, is the force of moving water and it is active at this stage. Very impressive for anyone who's examining this question. The river falls over the vertical drop as a waterfall. So this is our waterfall and you can see as well this is sedimentary rock. And why do I say this is sedimentary rock? Well, because we can see our bedding planes there and there. And between them, all of this area is strata. And over on this side again, you can see a lovely bedding plane there, there, and there. Okay? So we have some lovely sedimentary rock with a waterfall falling over it and a big pool underneath it, a plunge pool. The fall increases in size and the material carried by the river creates a deep plunge pool at its base. Now this becomes deeper over time due to hydraulic action and abrasion that the, the force of the water as it hits down over that steep um, or the vertical drop will cause bits of rock to break off and those bits of rock will be swirled around by the, the force of the water 
hitting off of the bank and hitting off of the the riverbed causing um, abrasion and then behind some waterfalls like this one you can see that there is a cave behind it so we're just going to talk now about what process might cause a cave like this one to be formed so the water falling into the plunge pool splashes against the back wall of the waterfall and as it does it starts to dissolve it the process of solution erodes the back wall dissolving it this undercuts the waterfall and creates an overhang eventually gravity and pressure will cause the overhang to collapse. This process repeats itself over time, making the waterfall retreat upstream and forming a gorge. And then we have our diagram. And this will be the kind of diagram that I'm going to draw with you in a while. Um, and if you were looking for waterfalls on a map, usually they are named. So you'd be following the river, you'd be looking for an area where contour lines come very close together, usually in the upper part of the river, in the upper course, and usually your waterfalls are named. Okay, so stay tuned for a instruction on how to draw the diagram of a waterfall.